Uh, my name is Joe Sinoka. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 2006 originally. Uh, I was a concert promoter and owned a small record label in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I'm from. And I worked with uh, bands in the, that local and regional area and helped push them to reach you know, greater heights. I just found people that I really were inspired by and wanted to work with and push because I wanted to share the world uh, with these bands and their art. I got to a point in my life where I felt like I'd done everything I could possibly do in Tulsa and a friend of mine named Justin Monroe was telling me about you know, what he was doing out in Los Angeles with his film work and about music supervision, which was something that had always fascinated me. I was always interested in finding the right song for the perfect scene. I quickly realized that I might be good at playlists and curating songs and finding that perfect song for the scene, but I'm not a guy that's good at dealing with people's people. I transitioned over to uh, learning about Google and learning about analytics and how search engines work. Started working freelance for a few companies and did that for a while and then I died. 2016, December. October of 2016, I got a call from my brother telling me that they were having a wedding reception in Milwaukee and he wanted me to come down and the family to come down, you know, celebrate getting married and everything. And so I hung up the phone and I immediately started thinking, you know, I started thinking about my weight. At the time I was 396 pounds. It's like, man, I've got to do something. I'm sleeping most of the day. I'm not, I'm not energetic. I'm not going out. There's days I don't even leave the house. This isn't good. This isn't healthy. It's not sustainable. So, um, I made the decision in October that I was going to get a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is a VSG. They basically reshape your stomach. They said that I need to go on a two-week liquid diet to get ready for the surgery. I needed to drop more weight before I go in for surgery. So I made the wedding reception my last supper. I lost 25 pounds before I went in for surgery. I went down and uh, had the surgery done. They told me to keep doing what I was doing for two more weeks. So I did. Kept drinking the muscle milk, kept drinking chicken broth, kept doing my thing. On the last day of the fourth week of this liquid diet, I died. Um, they say I died for 15 minutes, that they hit me with seven paddle blasts, and that I was technically brain dead. Um, I still have a hard time believing that, but I know it's true because... I've seen the doctor bills and seen everything they did. I was in a coma for three days. They put me in an ice suit. I was in intensive care for a week. Basically, what happened with my body is I didn't get enough electrolytes. They didn't tell me to drink my Gatorade. They didn't tell me to drink my Powerade Zero. I'm over here drinking muscle milk thinking I need to bulk up on protein. Nope. No potassium, no magnesium. And when your heart doesn't get those nutrients, you will die and chances are good you won't live to tell about it. All the doctors said that I, that I wasn't going to survive, that I had less than 1% chance of living. They said that I was gonna have to have speech therapy, that I was gonna have to do physical therapy, learn how to rewalk again, learn how to do everything all over again. There's a lot of things that I don't remember from high school, from college, from the record label days and from all the things I've done. But what's funny, is that when I hear a song, things are starting to trigger in my brain. Like I have memories attached to certain songs. So I, I never know what the song's going to be or what the memory's going to be, but I'll hear a song and it'll rekindle something. So it's like removing fog out of my brain. The first month, I was like, I don't understand why I'm alive. I don't understand why I'm here. Why is this happening? Why? I'm, I should be dead. I don't understand. Like lack of comprehension, lack of understanding as to why I was spared. Because like I know other people that have gone through a lot less that never make it. So what was going on? And after I started doing a little bit of rehab and started learning how to walk again and, and you know, walking around the room once or twice, 
my attitude changed to, okay, I'm here for a reason. What am I going to do about it? How am I going to make a difference? I don't want to live my next 40 years like I have my first 40. I want to make it count. Again, we are happy. This is, a, this is another garden. Um, you can see the guys here. They're trying to clean the garden. They're trying to clean the garden so that they can, you know, they can grow very, very well. And uh, they're so proud. They're so proud because you guys help them so much for the garden. So. You know, I kept racking my brain, okay, Stevens is going to graduate, so what's next? Do I just keep helping him out or supporting him? What, what, what can I do? How can I really make an impact? After everything that happened to me in, in December of 2016, it became, okay, I want to do something bold. I want to do something I've never done before. I want to do something that's going to make a lasting impact that can help change the course of either the whole town or or just people in the town or just do something to really help impact their lives and improve their quality of life. After being there for a week, I saw how they were treated, what they're going through, and that basically the Haiti government doesn't care about them because they don't earn any money. In Ranky, there's 28,000 people that basically aren't eating, don't have anything, and I would like to do things, starting with seeds, um, to change that, to maybe turn or transform that town into an agricultural town. Maybe it's a farming community. Maybe uh, it creates jobs and empowerment. Joe, we thank you so much. This is Garden, so he's the responsible. You know, the gardens, the gardens are, you know, the garden is very beautiful, it's nice. Rankeet needs to take care of Rankeet. If you take care of yourselves, other people will come to that. And it's easier said than done. I'm this armchair guy sitting over here in California. Oh, we could do this and we could do that. It's, it's way harder, it's way more complex, and I totally get it. It doesn't have to be, you know, American Red Cross, or it doesn't have to be like these huge nonprofit organizations doing all of the work. Individuals can do little simple things to have a big impact on someone's life. I might not be changing the world globally, I'm just trying to change a few lives in a town I know nothing about. I just want to help people because it's in my heart to help people, and it's all, I've always been that way. And I figured out a way to do it, and I'm going to do it as hard as I can for as long as I can. Everything else is up to God. I, I have no control over what happens. I can't control whether it rains. I can't control what happens down there. I can control whether they have seeds in their hand to put in the ground, and that, that's what I'm after. My name is Joe, and I'm a dreamer.